Welcome to Supplement Company Secrets, what supplement companies don't want you to know. Uh, the most typically misleading marketing terms you see in the ads, of course, are clinically proven, patented, doctor recommended, all natural, scientifically formulated, research proven, and of course my favorite, used for thousands of years. Well, we're going to actually talk about what each of those actually mean uh, and how they are manipulated to sell product. So, how many times have you seen ads for some supplement that claimed it was natural or doctor recommended or clinically proven, uh, only to try and find it didn't work? Well, that's the experience millions of people have year after year. Now, this report will attempt to cover most of those common and misleading marketing terms that you'll see in the ads and find on websites and such, and wonder why. Well, if you know, if it has all those great qualities, how come I still didn't get any results? Well we will get to the bottom of that and then you will have your eyes open as to why you didn't get results even though this product supposedly had all those amazing qualities. Clinically proven is first up so let's talk about that. Now, whenever I hear this term I want to call the company and ask you know which clinic where is this thing located? Uh, this term means absolutely nothing to the average buyer. Uh, what the term is insinuating of course is that the product has been in clinical use for some time and has been found to be effective uh, in a clinical setting but uh, this is rarely if ever true uh, there is no specific clinic uh, and it's not a, a regulated term that is you can call something clinically tested uh, clinically used that type of thing without getting yourself in any trouble because it it doesn't mean anything so it's a very common and misleading term and basically you can uh, ignore it unless somebody wants to point you uh, to the actual clinic and generally they can't now patented Patented is my personal favorite because it is, of course, probably the most powerful of the misleading marketing terms used in the industry. Uh, people are under the assumption that a patent means the U.S. government office has evaluated a product and found it to be so effective it's deserving of a patent. Uh, and, and it makes sense why people would think that, but it's simply not the case. Uh, the granting of a patent, and, and by the way, there are several forms of patent, some of which are uh, much more difficult to obtain than others, but we won't even co go into that. But basically it means uh, the company has an exclusive right to sell that product for the length of the patent. That is, they've got uh, intellectual protection uh, against other people infringing on their patent, whether it's a concept or whatever. But it does not mean in any way that this product has been proven to be effective or better than some other product. It just means it is a, a unique idea worth legal protection. Now, it's not as if they've convinced the U.S. Patent Office that the idea, the formula, whatever, uh, is original enough that it, or what's original enough to grant the patent, but it's, it doesn't mean it's effective. That is, uh, it doesn't mean that it has been backed up by legitimate research to get this patent. Now, we would all hope that products that get patents are backed up by legit research, but this is just not the case. Uh, there are actually some excellent products with patents and there are some really crappy products with patents. Uh, if you ever actually uh, take the time to go through the US patent database, which you can do online, uh, it's actually pretty fun because there are some really silly patents out there. So I, I'm going to take the most time to discuss the idea of, of how patents are very misleading. And again, uh, patents certainly do have their specific uses uh, to protect companies, to protect unique ideas, and, and again, remember, uh, a patent simply protects a company's legal, financial, intellectual interests, not that the product is effective per se. So translated, as I said, there are some really silly patents out there. Uh, with vir virtually nothing to do that has to do with their effectiveness per se, but uh, uh, take a quick perusal of uh, the patent office page, uh, which is uh, www.uspto.gov, and, and actually, like I say, it can be pretty fun because you can find some some really goofy stuff that would. Now, similar to clinically proven, doctor recommended has many of the same drawbacks. I mean, I always I want to call a company up and ask. Which doctor is that? And, and can I have her phone number or his phone number? Uh, somehow I know uh, they won't have a doctor for me to talk to. Now, that's not to say that doctors, uh, legitimate doctors, don't work for companies or have involvement in companies, but you know, the, the blanket statement doctor recommended, um, like I say, it does not mean anything. It's not a regulated term. You can pretend all day long. 
Um, and again, what kind of doctor are we talking about? A medical doctor or a person with a PhD who is technically also a doctor uh, in an unrelated field? Uh, do I care if a person with a PhD in French history uh, is recommending the product? Well, no, I really don't and, 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 and nor should you. Now, the other, of course, obvious question that people sometimes do realize they should be asking is, okay, do these doctors or doctor they have listed, let's say they have specific doctors listed, which sometimes they do, do they have financial interest in recommending the product or is he doing it out of the goodness of his heart? Uh, the reality is that most MDs know actually very little about nutrition and nutritional supplements anyway. But again, that's another issue. Uh, the bottom line, however, is that 99% of the time, doctor recommended is a worthless term with no bearing on the effectiveness, the quality, or the safety of this product. So again, don't fall for this. Uh, yes, they might have specific doctors mentioned, they might be listed, and obviously they have financial interest uh, in the product. So they don't mind being listed. Uh, of course, all natural. I, I just hate this term. Uh, it means nothing at all, yet people seem to fall for it virtually every time. I mean, flying is not natural, but we humans do it all the time. Uh, uranium is natural, but do you want to eat the stuff? Of course you don't. Uh, it's an irre irrelevant and ambiguous term. It, just ignore it. It means absolutely nothing. And, and yet, so many people fall for this, this term, all natural. We do things that are not natural all the time for the betterment of our health, and we do things that are natural that are to the detriment of our health and so on and so on. So it just has absolutely no bearing on the product that it is all natural. And in fact, it doesn't mean it. it there is no such thing as all natural. Therefore, just ignore this term. Uh, scientifically formulated as opposed to what? Unscientifically formulated? Designed by monkeys working on a computer? One would hope the product in question was formulated with some scientific grounding in mind. But uh, this is rarely the case, sad to say. Many products are designed with their marketing power in mind, not their scientific strengths, uh, which really leads us to our next section. But their scientifically formulated, again, is a, just a non-term that has absolutely no bearing on reality. Research proven. Now, this is potentially the most confusing of the categories. If the company has funded legitimate studies at an independent location and the study was published in a peer-reviewed journal someplace, that's great. I applaud that company and have for many years lamented about the number of companies that refuse to pay for research to support their own products. Uh, the sad fact is very few companies spend money on real research preferring to spend money on marketing. Now you also would not believe what passes for research with some companies. Uh, the real harm is that the good companies that do shell out money for real research have to compete with companies that simply pretend to. And that can put the good companies at a real disadvantage, uh, not to mention it fools people into potentially buying a product with no research behind it. And that's, you know, that's the sad fact. Used for thousands of years. How many times have you heard that one? Now, last but not least, this gem of a marketing term. So if the product has only been around for, oh, 300 years, is that no good? I mean, people have been eating things like tiger penis uh, for thousands of years in China. Does that mean it works or is safe? The answer is, uh, drum roll, no. Of course, at one time the Earth was considered flat, and uh, it was once believed the sun revolved around the Earth. But times change. I mean, sure, an herb being used for a few thousand years, such as ephedra, uh, mawang, does lend some legitimacy to its safety and effectiveness. But it's far from proof the herb in question is either safe or effective, or the supplement in question, or what have you. Uh, time alone is not a factor to its safety or effectiveness, so you really don't want to pay any attention to that. Yet, it is a term thrown around all the time, used for 800 years by aboriginals and so on and so on. Again, not a term of any value to the general public. Well, there you have it, my down and dirty guide to the world of marketing terms employed by some companies trying to sell you a product. I mean, companies out there trying to sell you a quality effective product do exist. But you have to do the legwork and look into their marketing claims. Uh, the next time you hear or see an ad that says their product is clinically proven, doctor recommended, all natural, scientifically formulated and patented, don't assume it's any of those things or that any of them really matter to the effectiveness of this product. You have to actually be your own product advocate and look a little deeper than those ridiculous marketing claims.